So data comes a little late, but then I estimated it. I never mind, right? But <laughs> what is this show about? This show is very simple. Uh, everybody looks at news, reads economics, watches the TV, and assumes that, okay, because economy is going to do X, Y, Z, and central banks around the world are going to do A, B, C, therefore, I'm going to predict that market is going to go this way. Every day, millions of people read the news and think that they spotted something which nobody else has magically seen. But we all know that is not the case. We all know that there are hundreds and thousands of people across the world employed by the top-notch institutions in the world, banks, etc., etc., who have, among other things, the most important thing, which is insider information. So essentially, if you are playing in a rigged casino, the smart thing to do is see what the insiders are doing, right? And try to play exactly the same game. So what do we do? We look at charts, open interest, FIDI data, and these are the insiders, right? Uh, whatever the big guys are doing is shown in charts, is shown in open interest data, is shown in FIDI data. So without using our brains in no form whatsoever, we just copy the trades, right? This is the central idea of Kiala Graham market. I think we should change it to copy Graham market, but, uh, but anyway, so yesterday, I think uh, in the end, our verdict was that we have a, see, okay. Uh, so I did say I have a bearish bias. I have uh, said that there are two reasons to be bullish and uh, four reasons to be bearish. And after all this, I kept my long questions and I deserve it. I got screwed today. <laughs> but but I, I but I hope you guys, uh, you know, watched the program yesterday and did what we uh, talked about yesterday, which is we said if Nifty closes weak below 18200, it has to be, it's extremely tricky. We also said there are four reasons to be bearish and two reasons to be bullish. Therefore, we our bias was inherently bearish, right? Um, so uh, yesterday's uh, predictions were right. Oh, it's just that I didn't listen to myself, maybe. <laughs> I think after this uh, thing ends every morning, I should also watch what I, what I said the previous day. Might help me in my trading. But uh, uh, holy God, man. Bhavesh, I just saw your uh, message. I hope uh, market zooms up and you and I both get rescued. Uh, okay, so here's the thing, right? Let's get cut to the chase. I think the single most important chart, right? The single, single most important chart for this week is this particular chart, which is being formed right now, right? So this line you're seeing <laughs> here, the blue thick line we have drawn is a trend line <clears throat> that connected COVID low, Ukraine low, etc. Et I mean, those who are regular know that this line is the most important support uh, in Nifty's last two years history, perhaps, right? Uh, so, and it looks like it's broken, right? It looks like, I'm not sure, it may be broken, right? Because lines can be thought either either up or down and depending on how you draw it, it can easily be. Now, if tomorrow's close happens below, let's say 18300-ish, Right, then what we essentially will end up having is a chart that looks like is a chart pattern that looks like this. My worry with this pattern is that this is a bearish harami. A bearish harami is usually a reversal pattern formed at the end of a bull trend. And if this pattern is formed tomorrow, we are in for uh, a rough ride um, next week. But if Nifty's close happens above 18300 tomorrow, then what in futures, right? I'm talking everything in terms of futures because you trade futures, you look at futures. We don't trade spot, we don't look at spot. Bullish Harami, on the other hand, will be formed if Nifty future closes above 18300, right? So today, tomorrow by around 325 PM, you will clearly know key what is the candle for the week looking like. If it is this candle, then there is a case for bullishness to continue. But if this is this candle, then we can have a signal of reversal for next week. And if this candle is formed and there is one more candle confirming next week, then we'll see a downtrend, right? This is the classical theory, right? Now let's look at monthly candle because we are towards the end of uh, monthly expiry, not technically because May expiry is somewhere around, but it's still worth looking at what is the monthly candle looking like early on. So this is supremely interesting. This thing, whatever this thing is, 
आई शुड बिलीव दिस सो निफ्टी मंथली कैंडल इज लुकिंग लाइक दिस राइट दिस इज यूजली सो इट्स इट्स लाइक लुकिंग लाइक दिस एंड इफ टुमोरो if this month further bearishness continues then we'll mostly end up with this and this candle is a shooting star but if next this week and next week happen to be good weeks then again the monthly candle will look like this which is a good candle so i mean you you see the problem right it all depends on where the monthly and weekly candle closes there's still a fair degree of uncertainty in the market If you look at Bank Nifty again, this is this is consolidating below the top of all-time high, right? Below all-time high, Bank Nifty is consolidating this zone, right? Uh, there is no clear indication from Bank Nifty at least that it is bullish or bearish, uh, although there are a series of small candles which are getting formed towards the last few trading sessions, right? Let's look at the weekly candle of Bank Nifty and. Yeah, I'm pakka buying trading views. So I promise, from one software provider to another, trading view dude. If you're watching this, I'll buy your subscription, man. If you know the trading view founder, please tell him. I'm buying. Sorry. So this is a Doji on weekly time frame. This is nothing. I mean, there's nothing much in it, right? So I've always maintained over the last few days that Bank Nifty is way stronger than Nifty, and it is playing out exactly that way because Bank Nifty is not giving you reversal patterns. Even if this pattern confirms tomorrow, it's not a reversal. because it's at best a doji for reversal to happen it should have been formed here like this right but it's not getting formed like that so bank nifty is uh, definitely stronger than nifty but even in bank nifty it all depends on the uh, weekly close finally looking at dollar look dollar has met our target right i i was telling yesterday that there is a possibility of an update upside till 80 to 70 80 to 80 that is hit now now honestly i'll try to be यार ये अजीब बात है रॉक रॉक वाइड यू थिंक माय यूएसडी एनआर व्यू इज रॉक मैं आई टोल्ड यू 80 टू 70 इन द लास्ट थ्री दिस थिंग एट लीस्ट सो या अनुराग आई नो आई नो सी द थिंग इज दिस राइट दिस सो आई आई टेक दिस क्वेश्चन एट द एंड ऑफ इट राइट ओह ओके सूर्य थैंक्स फॉर दैट इनपुट आई विल ट्राई टू डू सम ब्ला ब्ला बिफोर द एक्चुअल स्ट्रीम स्टार्ट्स Okay, 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 okay. I'm just reading the comments. Uh, thank you, Praveen. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you for your comment. Uh, okay. Now let's look at dollar. So dollar basically looks like it has hit the trend line. I'll be very uh, so. It, it now it depends, right? I don't know if it's going to break out or uh, uh, come down. Uh, it could go both ways, right? Who knows? So let's not try to you know take too much of a Uh, so I have taken a small trade on dollar uh, with some thirty forty k max loss types, but it's a bull put spread. I'm mean, sorry, bear put spread with uh, limited downside. But I don't do that because I am doing it because of chill. So sorry. <laughs> so but then dollar has hit the eighty to seventy targets. Now maybe it will break out or maybe it will come down. But this target was kind of a given. Now let's look at open interest chart. See, open interest chart is it seats at the beginning of the month. so this is a monthly expiry last week of the month there isn't much of an action happening right uh, 18 18200 plus has a lot of oi uh, it definitely seems more bearish than bullish but it see uh, open interest starts picking up when an expiry becomes a weekly expiry the monthly expiry becomes a weekly expiry tomorrow right so tomorrow we'll see genuine oi forming and uh, i'm guessing that uh, uh, right now it looks a little bearish Uh, PCR is slight neutral, but if you look around the ATM, it's all bearish. But any two hundred has solid open interest. Uh, finally, going to FIDA data. Okay, FIDA data is the complete curveball. So for those of you who are new here, see this gap between. So the red lines represent puts, green lines represent calls. Uh, whenever there is a big gap between red and green, right? Usually red is more than green. uh it is bearish and whenever this gap reduces it is bullish now look at yesterday to today right the gap has just closed now there are so many calls as much i mean there are nearly as many calls total oi as there are puts here right so it's almost like equal i mean and whenever bulls number sorry whenever uh, uh 
put number equal to call number usually market goes up whenever they are even near equal right so we are now having a near equal and that is because fi actually went ahead and bought one and a half lakh calls today and they bought only 46000 puts so net net they are long plus 1 lakh quantity in bullish instruments right and this is bullish data if that is not enough 700 crores of futures buy if that is not enough 1000 crores of stock buy right so net net fii is bullish on all three counts they are bullish options they are bullish futures they are bullish stock so i mean everything i said so far right uh, <laughs> would have indicated towards a bearishness it's just that fi data is a complete curveball right and if you look at fi futures outstanding oi also yesterday they had uh, 11000 quantity outstanding negative oi now they have just 4000 quantity uh, 6.6k quantity or plus change today so basically what's my meta uh, see it's tough right because the candle is uncertain leaning towards bearish right uh, open interest is kind of bearish so let me just write that down right this is uh, how to say it's it's just leaning it's not confirmed yet because the weekly closing is not uh, over yet so this is leaning towards bearish oi is also leaning towards bearish but fii di data is mega bullish especially the option data is mega bullish option data is and option data we have seen in the past is a fairly reliable indicator of uh, where they are positioned right so now my entire game plan reduces to look at the close of nifty if nifty gives a close of above 18300 on futures right any there you you will see the zone looking at the price action uh, if it closes above 18300 and the candle forms like this if it's a positive candle green candle Uh, instead of a red candle then we might have up moves coming but if if nifty futures candle tomorrow's weekly closing candle looks like this then we are going to have trouble uh, in the market right so basically it's a wait and watch thing for me although i didn't exactly wait and watch i kept some of my bullish positions and that didn't go well i must have seen my verified pnl uh Rakesh is saying that buy could also because they have exited their weekly position. No, so the thing is this, right? Uh, uh, no, no, nobody is making coffee for me. I think somebody is preparing food for our puppies. <laughs> the, the background sounds are those. Uh, so, so anyway, so coming back to this, right? Uh, I think the catch is tomorrow's end. Uh, and uh, somebody was commenting that it could be because FI. is a squaring of their weekly position uh, yes and no right because the thing is this right although these might be today's positions these are outstanding contracts right these have not been squared off these are i mean uh, today's expiry contracts right will not come in this data because they are over right the contract is over expiry is khatam the point is if you look at this data there is still 3 lakh quantity calls and um, 3 lakh quantity puts outstanding i am saying that fi is bullish not just based on the buy figure of today i am basing it on the outstanding quantity and you have to look at it in that perspective right yesterday the outstanding quantity of calls was this today the outstanding quantity of calls is this so these are calls which are right now outstanding and these calls and puts are not of the next week they are of the monthly expiry right so good question very good that you asked it thank you for asking i i think uh, viewers learned something from it right <clears throat> rahul is asking looks like market won't move too much due to i uh, mixed signals kind corner time nahi bhaiya don't do end corner because next week is definitely 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 going to be uh, uh volatile uh, how was fndo for you I, like what do you mean by how was fndo for you <laughs> okay uh Uh, what else? 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 Bobby, the last should we follow chart or FI data? See, the thing is this, right? So I'll tell you why it's a uh, better idea to follow OI and chart uh, uh, FI over chart. See, there are many times when chart patterns are very simple. 
right but there is some time when chart pa- charts become a little subjective so for example right look at uh, today's chart right or look at this chart right let's say bank nifty ends or nifty ends exactly like a doji cross tomorrow right then what do you do this is like okay it can go down go up who knows right depends on next week's closing if that is formed and if it is uh, you know uh, uh, kind of uh, mixed signal then it's not a bad idea to look at two other data points which is open interest and fi data right the problem with charts is that charts are kind of difficult to interpret the lines may not exactly be where we looked at and also um, some patterns are not clear enough so i think looking at all these things together is the way to go rather than uh, uh, just look at one thing but anyway that's our analysis for today we'll see you again on sunday night uh, thank you again for watching as usual please uh, take care and keep your capital safe uh,